Okay, guys, we are live. Let's see if this is working properly, and I think it should. So welcome to a new show. Uh, this is a new YouTube live. It's a special occasion. We have Black Friday. I'm going to talk about, uh, about Black Friday, but not only. We're going to talk about mainly language learning. Now, let me chat. Let me chat. Check the chat and see if everything is working properly. I cannot see the chat actually, but let's see. Okay, so if you guys are around, please just write something like, hey, I'm here, uh, I'm alive. <laughs> Moe Dale says, hello, Luca. I saw other messages before, but for whatever reason, they have disappeared, but I took the time to write one question. Uh, hi, from Rome to Nicaragua. Ciao, Teresa. Yo. Uh, Branca, hi Luca, Carolina, hola, ciao Luca, ciao a tutti, buongiorno, bonjour a tout le monde, hi to everybody, hello zusammen, uh, so let's get started, uh, salut les français, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about language learning, so feel free to ask uh, any question, this is called ask Luca anything, so you can ask me anything you want, um, a couple of question, a couple of things I want to tell you. Feel free to write in the chat. Um, if I don't see any of your questions, is because um, there's going to be a lot as usual. So I'm going to try to do my best to answer everybody's question. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, I already saw a couple of interesting um, questions. Um, let's start with dude. Hi, dude. Uh, so, will deliberate practice help to overcome the intermediate plateau in language learning? For those who don't know about the infamous intermediate plateau, well, that's the zone where you get stuck. You're kind of like a low intermediate learner and you want to reach fluency and you don't know what to do. Um, and the answer to dude is yes, deliberate practice is one of the things that you have to do in order to overcome the intermediate plateau. In other words, if you do not do things deliberately, then you're going to get stuck. Let me give an example. For example, you started reading something, you, you read a lot, but you're not doing this deliberately. You're just reading for the sake of reading. Well, doing it deliberately means to uh, highlight words, to underline stuff, um, to jot down words, to reuse them maybe in a conversation. This is just one example, but the intermediate, the let's say deliberate practice can be applied to any area of language learning. So the answer to dude is yes. You need deliberate practice and you also need simple practice in order to reach the upper echelons of language learning, so to speak. Hi, Enrique. Hi to everybody. I'm seeing here a lot of questions. Um, Dakota asks, what is deliberate practice? Um, Dakota, if you're interested, you can just type deliberate practice. There's a book that is amazing, which is called Science, the, the Peak of something like that. Ex I, have it. I have it somewhere there. Uh, it's uh, by Ericsson. Uh, and it should be science or peak, the science of expertise or something along the lines. It talks about how amazing chess players, am amazing athletes, amazing language learners reach the upper echelons of whatever skill. And it's a really important skill. And, um, you know, not a lot of people talk about this in the, in the realm of language learning. And it really makes a difference if you really want to speak any language well. Uh, Globus asks, what is your favorite language you've learned? I love them all. It's like having children and more and more children come to your family. You love them all. But I have to say that I've, I fall in love with Elinika, Greek, and I try to learn it every single day. And I live actually with a Greek guy from Thessaloniki who's probably watching this very same show from the other room. Uh, and we have Mia um, Kovedula. So we have a nice chat every day. Um, you know, about the meaning of life, geopolitics, and everything in between in Greek, and it makes me happy to be able to finally use Greek after so many years of learning. Um, so, did you learn Chinese? What will be your advice to learn that language? Yeah, yes, I learned Chinese back in the day, 10 years ago. I, I think I started in 2010, and uh, it was one of the most amazing experiences. Unfortunately, I do not speak Chinese that often. I, don't, I do not use it that often these days, um, but um, it's great. Um, it's just a fantastic language to learn and very useful these days. I would just say that if you started learning Chinese, my advice is to um, learn the tones, focus on pronunciation and intonation first and foremost, and there is a good way of learning 
um, Chinese tones and the bad way of learning Chinese tones. The traditional way of learning Chinese tones doesn't work that much, but if you work in chunks, so you start learning, instead of the single tones, you start learning pairs of tones. For example, 我是, you know, 我 means I, 是 means to be. But if you learn 我是, just as one sound, you don't have to make so many efforts in trying to learn every single syllable. And this is not how we learn you know, English, Italian, or any other language. Imagine learning Italian, English, or any European language just focusing on the single syllable. It would drive you nuts. So, Ernie asks, Ernie, the daily learner, I, I think I've seen this, uh, I've seen you, Ernie, before. Luca, would you learn Chinese uh, again? What would you do differently? Wonderful question. Yes, I made a video about that, about my failure learning Japanese, and I can't wait to go back to learning Japanese. But in the next language product, product Product project is actually learning Turkish, uh, and that is going to start in January. And I'm seriously contemplating the idea of doing some live shows or just showing you how I learn from the get go, so you see what actually happens here on my very same desktop when I learn foreign languages. And Amido says, "Look, I just bought your two courses and book in Black Friday. They are amazing, fantastic, Ramiro. And by the way, I'm going to say this three times at the beginning now." In the middle and at the end, we are currently running a Black Friday campaign. And I'm just going to um, put the link here. You can see directly all our products and what we're doing right now. So um, I think some of you know that I have uh, a language learning school or academy. And we have, as of now, I, I founded this company uh, two years, two and a half years ago in 2021. We have um, so far four courses two in English, two completely in Spanish, and they are about how to learn any language. Um, the first one is about how to learn any language from scratch through my bidirectional translation method. The second one is how to overcome the intermediate plateau, the very same plateau I was talking about before. And then we have the very same courses in Spanish and my book. I published this ebook. Um, three, four months ago, and it's going really well. Um, I'm super excited about this this pro um, pro uh, project in general because uh, people are, you know, loving the book, and it's a simple way of getting into my language learning world. I tell stories of my life that I've never talked about before. Uh, so thank you uh, again for all those who bought the courses. If you want to check um, anyway what these courses are about, you can check on the link. I'm going to share it two more times during uh, this live. We have 50% off every single course and the book until Monday. So uh, maybe after this live show, just take a look if you're interested. And if you're not, that's that's great. Anyway, uh, if, you're, if you can't afford the courses or for whatever reason you're not interested, you can always, um, you know, go to the website, lucanapero.com. I'm just going to, I'm going to share this here. And you can sign up to the newsletter. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this new newsletter is completely free and I'm sending um, every every single month, we're sending um, bi, bi weekly messages and also one message every month about something cool that, uh, that happened during the, the month. People are loving these stories of, of my life, of what happened behind the scenes. And we're getting, um, for 2024, we're, we're getting um, a lot of new stuff. We are about to publish a very cool, completely free ebook that is basically an entire book that I wrote, and it's an audiobook, completely free. If you sign up to the newsletter, you're going to get that uh, very soon. It's going to be ready within the next three weeks. I've been working on it, my team and I, and um, I promise it's going to be great. Um, I'm going up, just a second, uh, going up here to see if I missed some questions. Uh, again, if I missed some of your questions, guys, um, sorry about that. It's just that there's many questions, and I'm going to try to answer each and every question in a concise way. Dakota says, Se grande Luca, hi from California. Hi Dakota, hi back. I think Dakota, you asked me the question about uh, the deliberate practice. Um, so do you juggle several languages? G Doug says, yes, I do. Uh, meaning that I get to use six or seven languages every single day. And I think that the secret of speaking a bunch of languages is actually to use them. If you can't use them, you're going to lose them, as they say. So I'm trying to build a life around languages so that I can get to use them every single day. Um, let me see here. 
David, that we're looking forward to your latest book to come out of Deutsch. We're translating the book into Italian and Spanish. These are the next languages read by me in a recording studio. Um, howdy, Lucchino. <laughs> when will you come to Berlin? Richard calls me Lucchino. Actually, we were thinking of uh, making a live Richard and I, he was here in Rome. We had a lot of fun. And if you guys are interested, by the way, Richard, for those few left in the world who don't know Richard Simcott, in the realm of language learning, he's the king. He speaks 50 languages, one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Not just a great polyglot, but a, a fantastic person in general. Finnish language nuggets. Hi, Luca. How do you do you use social skills? How do social skills affect language learning? What principles do you follow in this? Big question. Big question, I know. I, I'll try to answer in a very um, in a very concise way. Social skills are important so in your life in general and language learning too because they allow you to um, have smooth conversations. It's not about just the, the amount of words that you know or about the sentences that you know, about your grammar or your pronunciation. Uh, what really counts is what you do with those words and what you do with those sentences. And I think that when you when you're you know, you learn social skills, then you also learn to be a better conversationalist. I don't know if conversationalist is a word in English, but you get the point. So uh, social skills are important. And as any other skill, you can learn them. You can, you can acquire skill. You can read books. You can see how uh, people inter interact in real life. But you can also, for example, take courses, watch YouTube videos that talk about that. There's, there's ways. There's, there's a will. There's a way, as they say. So social skills are important when it comes to speaking language as well. Ghost, which language was the most difficult for you to learn? Without a doubt, Japanese, because I did not know how to address that. In the other question before, they asked me, how would you do it? How would you address um, Japanese now? The mistake that I made is that I was using my bidirectional translation, which always works, but I was not doing it with the right material. So I was trying to translate from the get-go very long sentences, and you don't want to do that when it comes to Japanese because the syntax is completely different. What, what I would do now is to get comprehensible input, input I can understand, for example, bilingual texts in Japanese and in English or in Italian, and then get as much comprehensible, interesting, and rich content as I can, maybe for a couple of years, enjoying the content in Japanese, and then I will start speaking with a tutor. This is what I would do in a nutshell. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but uh, in a nutshell, um, massive input is, uh, is the way to go for me. Um, let's see. Um, which language was the most difficult to learn? I've read that. Carolina, how to remember new words? I'm learning histology, and I wonder what's the best way to remember complicated terminology. That's a big question about learning vocabulary. Um, how to answer this in a very concise way. Learning vocabulary is the question, you know, uh, that people ask me all the time. And I always say that the most important thing, again, is to get massive input. Why? Because as your language, as your language skills evolve, you're going to build um, a growing infrastructure, linguistic infrastructure in your brain. And the more words you know, the more sentences you know, the more exposure you have to your target language, the more connections you will have. So words that do not stick now will stick later. You will recognize certain parts of, like in, in, root, in the root of words, you will recognize some other words and you will start learning them. Uh, they will stick. They will stick uh, more. But also, in answer to your question, I would say highlight words is something that works. If you highlight, highlight certain words and you focus on just the words that you find interesting, not every single word that you do not know. Otherwise, it's, there's too much, and your brain is going to go, whoa, stop, wait a second, is it, this is too much. And lastly, I would read a lot, like reading as much as you can, and this is going to make a huge difference. Reading as much as you can. Sorry if you heard this what's up, is because I have what's up open. So I'm just going to turn this off. I have a lot of things open here. <laughs> what's up, Skype, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um let's see. Will you will you continue learning languages um until forever? Well, yes, I will I will continue learning languages. I I, I don't think that I have a number 20, 30, 40. I will, I think I will continue learning languages one after the other until the rest of my life because uh, my family in particular, um, my father, but also my grandmother, my family in general has taught me the value of learning new things. And every single 
language that you learn expands your world. So I don't think I'll ever stop learning languages. I would like to learn the piano and get into music too, but let's see what happens. Uh, greetings from uh, Iraq. Hi, Karim. How's your Hungarian learning process um, doing, going? I'd love to see an update video about it. Um, I want to record a cool video, spoiler alert, with my uh, tutor, Petra, with whom I have uh, day, not daily, but weekly conversations. And it's a special video. It's not just a simple conversation. Uh, but I will break down the process of actually uh, talking to Petra. And I will do it with multiple languages. So 2024 is going to be the year where I, I hopefully crossing fingers. I'm going to go back to making um, weekly videos on YouTube, showing more, you know, not just talking about language learning in general, but showing more what I do on my desktop with my tutors. And if you guys like it, I can always, uh, you know, uh, also shoot videos out and, when I'm out and about talking to people. <clears throat> um, what's your take on Richard's raising multilingual children? Well, he's, he's raising uh, one, well, he's, I think his uh, his child his his daughter is 16 right now. We talked about him multiple times. Um, I think I don't know the nuts and bolts and the details of his philosophy of his take uh, when it comes to raising multilingual children. But in a nutshell, we we talked a little bit about it. But I think he gave a wonderful gift to his daughter the ability of speaking multiple languages. She's going to have that for the rest of her life. So I think that's that's great. There's multiple ways of raising a child in a multilingual environment so to speak bilingual or even three or four languages and there's a lot of fascinating books if you if you write for example how to raise a bilingual uh, you know how to raise bilingual children you'll kind of get a deluge of interesting books about it. i have a i have a couple here um so let me see let me see um <laughs> someone asks in russian когда следующий подкаст с давида One is, a, one is the next podcast with David is going to happen. We're going to do a live in February and we're going to, well, I spoiler alert, we're going to do something special, which is not just having a conversation in multiple languages, but um, we're going to do an analysis of an Italian text for those who are interested in Italian and to show how to, to build the skills of actually um, dissecting a text because that's the very first skill. When you have a text in a foreign language, how do you understand it? Uh, having a, your own another text uh, the same text in your own native language or in english that's going to be an interesting video um authentic asks uh, your bilateral translation bidirectional translation method is just another way of doing flashcards isn't it not exactly i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i made a video about flashcards so the, the bidirectional translation is, is a method where you basically dissect entire units of language in this case dialogue the dialogues and then you attack them from multiple angles you do some recall but actually um it's not about recalling it's not about remembering it's about understanding when you're i use the bidirectional translate is translation method to start learning any language for the very first three months so in that phase a lot of people think oh i have to learn you know just started learning Swedish, German, Japanese, I have to remember words, I have to remember every single word, etc, etc. That's not the point. When you're a beginner, you don't have to remember anything. Everything is difficult to remember because you do not have the linguistic infrastructure in place. The main point, hear me out, this is a very important point, as a beginner, it's to understand the structure of the language, not to memorize it. It's going to be much easier down the, li down the line to memorize things when you have enough exposure to the language. So the bidirectional translation in this regard is completely different from flashcards. It's a holistic way of understanding the basic um, foundation, the basic structure of a language, and to recall in order to understand, not in order to remember. It's a very important point. Uh, Fran Chigallo, I'm interested if I can't buy before Thursday night next time. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. We're going to run other uh, other campaigns. Is the methodology of learning different for methodology of learning dead languages different than modern languages, I guess? 
Um, no, it's exactly the same. It's just that we've been taught to learn dead languages in a very traditional way. I had, uh, I think um, for whatever reason, it's not public anymore, or you might find it on my blog. There's a very long post about how to learn dead languages the modern way, the non-traditional way. It's You can apply the bidirectional translation or any modern uh, method in order to learn dead languages. There's no difference. The fact that they're dead languages, we consider them dead, makes us think that we have to just read them, but you can speak them, you can listen to them, you can find audio these days, and even speakers, even people who say, hey, let's speak Latin, let's speak Greek, uh, you know, ancient Greek. So you can learn dead languages in a completely different way. Um, so... How do you know this comprehensible input is working? I know that it's working with, with a, a simple experiment. For example, you consume, pop, let's say that you consume podcasts, right? You consume one podcast um, today, and then you check two months later, and you listen to the same podcast, maybe the first time just by listening to it, you understood, you understood 30% without a transcript. Now you understand 50%. This is how you see that um, you know, comprehensible input works. Comprehen comprehensible input is the main pillar of learning any language because it's about language acquisition. There's a big difference between acquiring a language and learning a language. And actually, you can acquire and learn a language at the same time. It's a, it's a little bit complex now to go into the nuts and bolts and, you know, the ins and outs of acquiring versus learning, but I can guarantee you that comprehensible input is the way to go about language learning. There's a lot of methods, but this is a principle. The more exposure you get to your foreign language, the better it is. And then on top of that, you can speak, you can use it, you can write it, but there is no way, way around it. If you can just try to speak that language and you don't get a lot of um, input, um, well, that's that's where we're going to stall. That's exactly what happened with me with Hungarian. I tell the story in my book that I got completely stuck after two years of learning Hungarian. I could have and I still have a nice conversation about pretty much anything in Hungarian. But at, at the time, I could have this very nice conversation with my tutor. I was completely lost when it came to uh, listening to e even podcasts for intermediate learners. And so I just told myself, this is not working. What do I have to do instead of just having conversations with my tutor? And I told myself, okay, let's try to go through some podcasts and, you know, and for example, CZ, Hungarian with CZ, for those who are learning uh, Hungarian, she's fantastic. And also Petra, my um, Hungarian tutor and teacher, she has a, a wonderful website too, Easy Hungarian, it's called. I listen to a lot of these podcasts for people like, let's say, A2, B1, and my Hungarian comprehension skyrocketed together with the other skills. So uh, let me see here. There's a lot of questions. Um, Hola, Lugo, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. I'm, I'm good. Uh, you can ask questions in different language, languages, but I will reply in English just because, uh, again, we, 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 we want to keep it monolingual. But one day, if you like it, we can do maybe a bilingual uh, live Italian, English, English, French, whatever language you want. Um, Luca, ¿cómo estás? Espero que muy bien. Quería preguntarte si ideal aprender otro idioma si estás en un nivel B1 en inglés. Iniciar el sueco. Very interesting question. So, for example, she, uh, Brian asks, um, should I learn another language? Can I learn another language if I have a B1 in English? So, can I, can I start learning sueco, which means Swedish? And the answer is, um, I would say yes. Um, Brian, I would... Uh, rather get to a B2 level in English because in that way you're going to transition between language learner and language user. There's a big difference. A language learner has to sit down and still listen to podcasts and still use transcriptions in order to understand. So you, you're just a learner. You're kind of a student and you still have to sit. But when you become a language user and you get to a B2 level, then you can use that language. You can integrate it into your life. For example, uh, when you go running, you can listen to a podcast in English or you can have a conversation with your friends. You can watch a Netflix show. And at the same time, that's a moment where you can add another language because in this way, you are learning technically two languages. You will have to cope with two languages, but one is already part of your life. That's That would be my advice. But if you want to learn Swedish, you have this uh, burning desire to start learning Swedish, you have to remember that then you have to learn two languages at the same time. So since in English you still have a B1, then you have to engage in deliberate practice. Well, that's a moment where you have to dedicate 
you know, every single day, time to English and time to Swedish. And that is taxing. That takes a lot of energy and time because you're dealing with two languages, not just one. Um, czy często rozmawiasz po polsku, which means do you speak often in Polish? And the answer is a resounding a yes. I speak mówię po polsku uh, every day. Uh, let's let, let's switch back to English, otherwise people don't understand. Uh, I, I speak Polish uh, pretty much every single day. I listen to, I read Gazeta Wyborcza, which is um, a newspaper, a Polish newspaper. I watch TVN24, which is a YouTube channel. I, I watch Makowicz. I don't know if you anybody knows Makowicz, but he's a very interesting character who has a fantastic YouTube videos about history, um, you know, about traveling. Uh, so I get to use uh, Polish uh, every single day. I'm a language user in that case because I think I have a solid B2. Um, so the answer is uh, yes, tak. Często rozmawiam po polsku z ludźmi. Let me see here. Uh, oh boy, this is a very long. Uh, it's just going up and down. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see here. Lucas, um curso para brasileiro aprender com você quando será lançado? He's asking me when am I gonna am I gonna launch a course in 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 Brazilian Portuguese? For now, uh, we still don't know. We're still building the courses mainly in English and Spanish, and then as the as the the, the academy grows, we're gonna translate that into multiple languages. The courses we have, uh, in particular, the BDT, the Bidirectional Translation Method, has subtitles in um, uh, in Brazilian Portuguese. Karim asks, do you think ChatGPT and its likes will revolutionize language learning? The answer is yes. Um, I think fundamentally, no, in the sense that we're human beings, we still have to talk to other people. We have to use the language. We have to absorb it. We have to get exposure to the life, to the way language is really spoken by human beings. But you can um, optimize the process and you have other tools. Um, you can add other tools to your toolbox in order to learn languages. So there's a lot of fantastic um, ways in which you can use ChatGPT and uh, any uh, artificial intel AI tool at your disposal nowadays, for example. One way in which you can, um, let's say, optimize the process of speaking is talking to a machine. I know it's not this exactly the same thing, but it's still practice. If you really imagine that the person you're talking, the, the the machine you're talking to as a person, you can start talking to that person, and the huge advantage is that the machine does not judge. So you will not feel judged, and you feel a little bit more relaxed because talking to people can be taxing when it comes to, uh, you know, in general, interacting with other uh, human beings because we're all self-conscious when it comes to learning a foreign language. We still do not speak it well. We're full of doubts. I was in Greece this year. I uh, talk about this. I talked about this in the last monthly email that we sent through the newsletter. And I talked about the fact that even if I've been listening to Greek for five years, I've been learning Greek for five years, and I think I speak it decently now. I think I'm decently fluent. Uh, the problem is that um, I was going through certain situations for the first time because that was the very first time I was in Greece speaking Greek. I had been to Greece before, but never speaking Greek. And uh, going to the supermarket, ordering something at the restaurant was new for me. Old and new at the same time. Old because I had done it before in other languages. New because I had never done it in, uh, in Greek. So using, interacting, using the language with other human beings um, is emotionally taxing. And speaking with a machine is the that gray area that you say, okay, well, I'm a little bit self-conscious now. Let me talk to the machine. I just practice, practice, practice. Then you start using it with other people in real life. And the, all those hours uh, spent talking to the machine will definitely help. So this is one of the many ways in which ChatGPT and any other AI tool is going to revolutionize the way you learn languages. Um, Globus Syep difficult to pronounce. Would talking to yourself in a language do the same effect as practicing with natives? I was just talking about this uh, just just uh, just now. It's not the same thing because when you speak with other people, you get all this emotional stuff, right? I'm, I don't know. Raise your hands. So like virtually those who have experienced this uh, feeling of self-consciousness. Oh gosh, is he going to understand me? Am I going to understand this guy? If someone asks you point blank something and you go like, I don't understand. What do I do? Do I reply? And do I reply something, anything, and don't look like a fool? Or I, do I just say, I do not understand? And most of us just decide to not, 
just pretend that we understand because we're self-conscious. We feel stupid. We feel judged. This comes from school. But the reality is that any native speaker who's a nice guy or a nice girl will appreciate the fact that you're trying to speak um, their their native language. It's everything here, the fears that we have. Everybody goes through that because everybody went through the school system and we were thinking more about the performance than the act of communication. And think about that. Children are much better language learners, not because, you know, yes, their brain is more plastic and everything else, but just because they don't care. They don't care when they speak their own native language. They just want to focus. They just focus naturally on communication. Well, as adults, we focus on performance. Did I get that right? Did I conjugate that verb right? Who cares? Uh, this is a, a short experiment. If I say, for example, something along the lines of, let's say that I've been learning English for some time, right, for three months, and um, and I let go of all this paradigm. Oh, I have to perform. I have to speak uh, perfectly. I have to conjugate every verb perfectly. And you go uh, and you try to say whatever comes to your mind. Tell me if you understand this. Let me say, yesterday, meet friends. Do you understand what I wanted to say? I'm pretty sure you did. And if you, if the, the message got through, yes, the grammar was not perfect, but you got the message and then someone corrects you, can correct you if you're talking to a tutor. So if the the tutor or anybody corrects you, it means they got the point at the end of the day. Here's, here's why vocabulary is more important than grammar, especially at the beginning. But, you know, speaking is a, is a big thing. It's not just the technical stuff. It's not just the social skills. It's also the emotional stuff because language learning at the end of the day is an emotional adventure. It's not just about words, grammar, etc. It's emotional. Remember that. So let me see here. Um, Again, guys, sorry if I skipped some of the questions. Maybe you can ask them again one more time uh, so that I try to get to answer almost every question. I think it's not going to happen, but let's try. Um, do you have any experience in Finnish? I'm going to, Dakota asks, I'm going to meet uh, Tuomo, who's a, a, Finnish, a Finnish friend uh, tonight. We're going to have dinner together. Uh, I have some exp indirect experience with Finnish. Um, I was in Finland once. It's a fascinating language. One day I will learn it. Um, and yes, how was your experience with your Hungarian last time you visited Budapest? Uh, it was great. Uh, and one episode in particular, I remember actually two are the taxi going from the airport to the center and from the center to the airport. And I was talking to the taxi driver. The first one was this, uh, uh Morsos. The word Morsos means grumpy guy, uh, in the sixties who did not speak a word of, uh, uh, of Hungarian. I had to explain everything in Hungarian, where we wanted to go, etc. And then I had to get a receipt for my company, for the taxi, for the taxi ride. And I was proud that I managed to do that. I was somewhere, it was some technical stuff, you know, you know, the, the VAT and everything in between, but I managed to communicate um, rather well. And I was proud of the fact that I managed to speak with someone who did not speak a word of English and neither did he want to speak a word of English. So uh, that was a fascinating experience. And going to the airport, um, sorry, and when I w went to the airport, when I had to get back to Rome, I spoke for 30 minutes straight just in Hungarian with a very nice guy. He spoke English too. We spoke a little bit of English, but he prefers speaking Hungarian. We had a fantastic time. The language was just flowing. Why? Because I was focusing on uh, on communication. I, I got this amazing feeling that I got also the previous year when I was talking to Petra, my Hungarian teacher whom I met in Budapest also last year, where I did not care about grammar. I did not care about translating. I was translating in my head. No, I was just communicating. If I did not know a word, I would just circumvent it, try to use some other word. And the amazing thing is that when you focus on communication, you get to use what you know in order to get the point across. So the conversation was very smooth. We talked about everything like from you know how uh, budapest was back in the 70s we talked about whether budapest is dangerous or not we talked about everything it was just an amazing experience so um and i come back with stars in my eyes and thinking hungarian is amazing i want to go back one day i would like to live in budapest this is one of my uh projects for at least three months it's an amazing city if you've never been you should um let me see here um let me go up because the, you know, the, the chat is going crazy. Um, have you ever taken any language exam at C2 level? How do you prepare for that exam, especially in the listening part? I have, I just found it's somewhere there, I think. Yeah, it's, it's there, the, 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 the C2 
certificate in, in German. I got it in 2010. I have the C2, I passed the C2 in English, French, Spanish, and German. I'd like to do the C1 in Polish and the C1 in Russian. So I did pass these uh, four exams. It's difficult. For the listening part, I would say, uh, uh, Raj, I think you asked this question. First, get a lot of input. You will get to hear this from me a lot. Listen to as much as you can. The more you listen, the better. But you have to listen to stuff that is interesting and that you can at least partially understand it. By at least, I mean 60%. Because if you listen to stuff that is too too difficult, you're just going to get discouraged. There's this amazing uh, concept in, um, in skill development, which is called the Goldilocks zone or the zone of proximal development. You can look it up on, on Wikipedia. And basically, it's a zone where something is not too easy and not too difficult. If it's too easy, it's too easy. You don't learn much and you get bored. While if it's too difficult, it's discouraging. You have to learn to find yourself in that zone where a task, any task regarding language learning, is not too easy and not too difficult. It's just a little bit above your level. So if you're listening to a podcast, just to give an example, if you can understand at least 60%, then that's great. But if you're listening to something you do not understand at all, that's a bad thing. So my, my piece of advice in regard to your question is listen a lot. That's the base of the pyramid, so to speak. And then on top of that, get ready for the exam because we're going to ask you specific questions or some listening tasks that you're going to perform within that exam that are there is very special. And even native speakers will find it difficult if they don't prepare. But again, going back to your question, listen to uh, your target language as much as you can. So let me see here. Um, uh, once we achieve a good level in the target language and live in country, having limited time for dedicated study, is passive learning on the daily life enough to keep improving or not? Any exposure, any meaningful exposure to language is a chance to learn. So yes, my answer is yes. If you get the chance of watching a Netflix show, um, YouTube videos to chat on and off with some friends that you go out with, uh, then you will keep improving. Of course, you're going to get faster if you engage in deliberate practice on top of the mere exposure to language. So in other words, using the language every day. Um, have you ever seriously sentence mined, Authentic says, says, to the point of keeping a track of how many thousand sentences you've mined? Do you think the native speakers count words? Do they think about the amount of words they they know we got this obsession about numbers because there's safety in numbers, as they say, right? They say, well, if I can count, if I can measure something, then I feel safe. Then I feel like I'm making progress. <clears throat> now, to your point, I had this next to me. So when it comes to sentence mining, I don't count the sentences, but I do jot down. Let me give you an example. I hope you can see it. I'm not sure. Maybe the camera is not working that properly, but it looks that it's visible. The problem is not the camera quality. The, pro the problem is my handwriting. It's terrible. Anyway, just to give you an idea... This is um, a notebook which is called Conversations with Sophia. She's my Greek tutor. And basically, when we have conversations, what I do, let me, let me just show you. We have conversations, and I jot down something which is called episodic memory framework. And this means that I write, for example, here it's lesson two with Sophia, emotions and language learning. Speaking of language learning, of course. Um, and this gives you the context in which these sentences were like I mine sentences to use your own uh, your your own terminology, which means that I was listening, I was re-listening to the lesson I had, and I was just jotting down the words that I found you know meaningful. And then um, I don't think about the amount of words or amount of sentences. I don't I don't think in these terms. I think in terms of quality of communication. So, for example, two weeks later, I do this one. Once a week, I just take these sentences and I just rehearse the conversation because these sentences are dense enough so they can remember exactly what I talked about and I just kind of talk to myself. So it's not about amassing hoarding. Like I'm not a word hoarder. Uh, I, I, I just make sure that I write sentences. I jot them down while I re-listen to the lesson because I find these interesting. And I always write sentences or chunks of sentences. Just to give an idea here, osha um, piumacria uh, like the the further it is, the the better. Just just to give an idea, this is just one snippet or snippet or uh, traffic is bad in Athens, you know, uh, or other other snippets of snippets of 
really chunks. It's not even word, it's not even sentences, it's just chunks that I can reuse. And by the way, in the academy, we are about to release an amazing speaking course for A2 learners, not B1. B1 that's for later, but for those who want to learn how to use uh, chunks and 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 form sentences for um, amazing and effective communication. Remember, it's not about counting words. It's about making words count and using words for meaningful communication. So uh, let me see. <laughs> Jorge Mendoza says Taylor Swift is the music is, is the music industry. Lucas the language industry. Hugs from Cheetah. Thank you. Compared to Taylor Swift, what a what an honor. Um, so Milkun, if you had to, how would you take all an all listening approach? I have no problem to spend more time learning the language. I'm not sure what you mean by have no no problem to spend more time learning the language, but my answer to the how would you take an all listening approach is what I said before. Listen to stuff as much as you can to uh, anything that is interesting, rich, and slightly challenging for you. The more, the better. Milyen témákról tudsz beszélni magyarul? Bálint asks, and like um, how many um, subjects, topics, can you talk about in, in Magyar or in Hungarian? The answer is, I can talk about anything, you can talk about anything in a simple way. So again, don't think about in how many topics. It doesn't matter how many topics. What matters is the skill to address any topic. That's a different matter. It's not quantity, it's quality. So I invite you all to stop thinking, to get rid of, to snap out of this mindset of how many words do I know, how many grammar rules, how many topics, because it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't work this way in language learning. Even in our own native language, we can talk about certain topics. And for example, if I have to talk about rocket science, I'm going to be completely lost in Italian, whether it's Italian or any other language, because this is a, this is a, a topic I simply don't know. But I can talk about the little I know with the skills I have. Remember, this is really important. Um, uh, Berg asks, very interesting, Erinnern Sie sich Ihre Euro, Eureka Momenten auf den Sprachen, die Sie schon beherrscht haben? Do you remember some Eureka moments in the languages that uh, you have uh, beherrscht? Be beherrschen is a nice uh, is a nice term saying to um, um, dominar, it's coming in uh, in all the languages except in English to master a language. There's no such thing as mastering a language first. <laughs> it's important to stress. But yes, I did. I didn't have some eureka moments. The last one was in Greek uh, for for in Greece for Greek when I got to use the language and uh, or in Hungarian last year when I, for example, had um, this amazing conversation with Petra. Because normally when we have conversations uh, on on Skype or on Zoom. I struggle a little bit because I focus on performance. We are in this environment, Zoom, teacher, performance. But when I was there in the environment with her and we were not having a lesson, we were focusing on communication, it was a different matter, completely different. And so the, the answer is yes, I had many of these. Uh, and um, that's either when I start understanding everything and you go like, wow, I understand a movie, that's so cool. Or when you manage to have a meaningful communication with, with, with someone without... Uh, without a, a problem, you know, uh, that's that uh, really makes a difference, and it it really motivates you. These like uh, progress, however small, is uh, is motivating. You know, that's 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 a very important point in language learning. Are you going to the language event in Penang, South Malaysia, in December? Unfortunately, no. Richard was here in this very same apartment four days ago. He was talking talking to me about it. He's flying there, but I will be at the Polyga conference. Sorry, Polyga Gathering in Prague in May. You can look it up, Polyga Gathering Prague, May, and uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, let's see, retired and happy. What's your opinion? I like, I like the title. I, I like the name. I want to get retired and happy too. What's your opinion of news and slow Spanish as a source of input? I don't have a lot of experience with that, but I can tell you that if you like it and if you find it comprehensible and slightly above your level, that's 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 what you need. Um, Eddie asks, "Qual es el tema de hoy?" It's language learning, so I'm addressing questions. What's what's uh, what's the topic today's topic? It's it's anything connected and related to language learning. Um, so uh, another ad here. I promised I would talk to you about this one more time, and I will share <laughs> I will share the the link. So we're running a Black Friday campaign with all the courses, all the stuff I'm telling you. 
is inside the courses, whether it's for beginners or for intermediate learners. Lo tenemos en español también. Tenemos los dos cursos en inglés y en español and translating to multiple languages too uh, when it comes to subtitles. So you can enjoy the courses also uh, in other languages. And we also provide scripts, by the way, that you can copy and paste into DeepL or Google Translate just in case you don't speak English that well. We're running this campaign and I'm, I'm leaving you the, uh, <clears throat> the link here. And you can see uh, basically what we're offering. We're offering all the courses um, at 50% off. It's a great chance because some of the people can't afford, uh, maybe the price is too high. Now we have it 50%. And um, it's not just about what you learn in the courses. It's a community. I'm really proud of what we're building because the the value, one of the students sent me a very nice message and, and she told me that the value of these courses is okay. The information is important, but it's a community. You're going to see, we have a specific space on Circle where you can interact with people. Um, you can ask questions. You can share your emotions. We have the emotional space of language learning where people share their struggles. And it's really important, like the emotional part, dealing with Uh, how do I deal with failure? How do I deal with my emotions when talking to people? How do I deal with myself as a person in general when it comes to relating to other people in my target language? How do you cope with, you know, not being able to understand something? Every, in each and every one of us has had their fair share of disappointments, um, you know, failures or, or perceived failures, right? I couldn't communicate with that person. Maybe one day you feel on, on, on the top of the world and the other day you can't even string a sentence together because you're too tired or someone treated you not nicely and you feel dejected. It's the emotional part that really counts. It's the mindset. And, and in the school, we're building a, a generation of, of students who have a very strong mindset, not just the skill set. The skill set is important, mind you. It's all about learning how to learn. But it's not only that. It's also the emotional part and the organizational part. How do you find the time? How do you organize your time, your energy, and your concentration? And <clears throat> we're packaged uh, everything in um, in this um, in these courses, and we're building new ones. Uh, one of the courses that we're going to build is going to be um, well. We're actually already building it right now. How to learn two languages at once? This is one of the most requested questions, you know. And finally, we're going to get it out in 2024. Anyway, <clears throat> and and I also wanted to share uh, the link for those who cannot afford courses, don't want to buy courses for whatever reason. You can always sign up to the newsletter, and we have. Um, I'm currently uh, selling my ebook, but in a few weeks we're going to send all those who sub sub subscribe to the newsletter. A new ebook completely for free. And uh, it's also an audiobook read by me. I read it in the recording studio a few days ago. It's it's in the works, guys and girls, and it's gonna be great. Anyway, so let's uh, I'm gonna go to the bottom now to see the most recent questions. Um, love from India. Thank you, Janie. Um, so Tak for all, I think. Thank you for everything. I think it's in Danish. Uh, thank, thank you for everything. Using ChatGPT to generate increasingly complex sentences in my target language. How do you how to generate the speech in that language? I wouldn't focus too much on increasingly complex sentences. I would actually start with the basics and start using chunks. Think about that. Any sentence is made of smaller chunks, not just words, but chunks. You know, if I say something like "I want to go to Japan because I've never been there," you have "I want to go to Japan because I've never." Been there. Just an example of chunks. You can focus on chunks, and then with simple chunks, you can form any sentence. I wouldn't think directly in building more and more complex sentences. I would. I would. You can use GPT in this way, but I think it's a, a better strategy is to think in terms of chunks, not complex sentences. Sentences are tools that are not easy to uh, to manage. The shorter, the better. And when you have short sentences and short chunks, you can. Uh, learn to connect them and uh, in, in in amazing ways. You know, that's a combination of uh, the art of creation is the art of combination, my father used to say. Um, so let me see. Have you, have you ever tried to learn Kurdish? It's quite challenging. I never tried to learn Kurdish. It's not in, in my list of languages, but maybe, um, you know, one day it will happen. Do you use the IPA symbols to learn a new language? Dakota asks. 
Um, the answer is no, I don't use the IPA. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't go so far as to say I don't recommend it. I had a couple of conversations with other creators and, and, and you, uh, you know, YouTubers and language learners who say, oh, swear by the IPA, you have to use the IPA. I've never used it. If you like it and you find it useful, that's fine. Uh, I, I normally, what I do is I listen and I read. Listen and I read a transcript so that I create this sound, it's called sound mapping in a very natural way. My brain picks the way a language is spoken and the way it's written puts them together. I did this with Chinese. It's amazing. Even in a language like Chinese, you learn to recognize the sound and associate it with Chinese characters. And when you have languages with a Latin alphabet, it's even better. Um, uh, we have uh, Berak, the logic, you ask very, in, 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 uh, in German, asks very philosophical questions. Was würde Ihre Botschaft sein für die ganze Gemeinschaft als ein Sprachbegeister? What is, <coughs> what is the message to the world? Uh, as you know, in general, as a language learner, as a polyglot, my answer would be um, that I learn languages to have a better life, and you should do too. So, learning languages is is something that can change you. It cannot just change the way you live. You can get a better job. You can get a, a partner. You can make more friends. You can travel more easily. But it changes you at an emotional and a spiritual a spiritual level because you start understanding not only the world better but also yourself that's a, that's a message learn languages guys um every single language that you learn is one more tool to understand yourself in the world uh, how to overcome the intermediate plateau? I've been trying so hard, but feeling stuck. Jenny says, I talked about this before. Um, I am not, so for the questions that are similar to some questions that I already replied, you can rewatch uh, this video if you can a little bit later. Unfortunately, I cannot answer the same question, but to, to make a long story short, you need deliberate practice. So if you if you go back to the recording, once this has been uploaded on YouTube, you will see that deliberate practice is a way to um, overcome this intermediate level. And there's a specific reason why you get stuck. Everybody gets stuck and you have to learn how to get unstuck by doing something different and deliberate. We talk about this in the Overcoming the Intermediate Plateau course. Uh, it's all about all the strategies about how to use podcasts, how to use books, um, how to use videos, how to read um, intensive, extensive reading, uh, how to speak and everything in between, deliberate practice and simple practice. Rani says, once again, the Albanian language is waiting to be learned from you. Nice. Albanian is very interesting. I have uh, one of my friends who's an interpreter. We talk about Albanian. Uh, he he got he told me that when he was in Albania and he was learning, uh, he was speaking Albanian, people were so nice to him. And I was in Albania, loved it, loved the country. Uh, I'd love to be back. Uh, I'd love to go back and I'd love to learn Albanian. One thing at a time, though. The next one is Turkish. <clears throat> So, um, someone asks Globus, uh, I kind of understand uh, Ukrainian because I know Polish and, and Russian and I watched uh, recently a TV series on Netflix. I don't remember the name of it, but it was a story of a girl who works at a hospital as a nurse and uh, Kiev was being bombarded and uh, I could understand most of it because it also had subtitles. So, with subtitles in English, I could actually figure out, and, and the, my knowledge of Russian and Polish, I could figure out what they were saying, which was an, ama an amazing feeling. Um, do you set time goals to reach each level, Frank asks. Uh, and I don't know if you guys know Scott Adams. Scott Adams is a, is a, is a famous cartoonist. Dilbert, he just wrote, he, he created this, uh, this series, and he talks about goals are for losers. Now, don't get me wrong. He just says goals are for losers, systems are for winners. And I... You know, that sentence struck me a lot because I've been working on systems. Goals are okay. They give you a direction, but what really makes you work is systems. So whenever you think about what is my goal, think in terms of systems. I talk about this, I think, in chapter number two of my book. Talk about, okay, I made the goal of learning Greek, for example, in 2017 or 2018. Oh, my goal is, I wrote 31st of December, 2000, uh, I think, 17 for the next year. I want to speak Greek fluently. That's a goal. But how do you transform this into a system? Well, systems are about habits. So what is the habit for speaking, for the goal of speaking fluently? Well, that is make sure that you get to speak maybe twice a week with your tutor every, um, every week. Do you see the difference between a goal that is vague and a system that transforms? It's a, is a not, another synonym for building habits. And you can apply this to any moving part of the learning process. So um, have you tested the latest GPT conversation feature practice talking to it? I have 
tinkered and toyed with it a little bit, but I got to tell you the truth. I always get, when I, when I think about, about it as of now, I've, I'm still, if I have to think about whether to dedicate time to talking to a machine or chatting with a machine and talking to a human being, I prefer talking to a human being. So I very much cher cherish and prefer talking to my uh, tutor in Greek, talking about the specific language right now, uh, rather than chatting in Greek with ChatGPT, because speaking with another um, person, you know, it's not just the, the fact that you're using the language, it's the emotional part. And remember that emotions and skill set, they do like this, your memory, you know, you remember stuff when you are emotionally involved in a conversation. Chatting is not a great way to involve emotions, at least in my book. Maybe for you it's different. Um, is accent relevant when trying to become an interpreter? Mikun Kabuto says, no, as long as you speak well enough that they understand you. If you have a foreign accent, it's, it's not the end of the world at all. I was in this interpreting school in Paris. Some Some colleagues were speaking, you know, with with a foreign accent, it did not matter. What matters is the, the, the ability to deliver well, to deliver a message well, to translate this message, to convey this message to the audience in the language you're translating or interpreting into. Um, Brian Saltmarsh, the name rings a bell. Ciao Luca, by the time you get to my statement, I don't know if you're still there. I'll be eating my dinner. But please remind people that learning a language is a marathon. So many people want results yesterday. Yes, we live in a world where we want results uh, here and now. But language learning is something that takes months and years. So again, going back to what I was saying before about Scott Adams, the cool thing about systems is that while goal is something that you set up in maybe three months or four months, and then maybe you get disappointed, a system is something that gives you a reward every single day. Think about that. So you, it's like climbing a mountain and you focus constantly on reaching the peak of the mountain versus focusing on each step. And every 10 steps, you look back and you look at the wonderful, uh, you know, panorama, as I say in Italian, landscape that you get there and you enjoy the process. That is how it works. You get a constant reward by focusing on the single uh, steps that, that will take you there. Learning a language well, I know that there's a lot of people on YouTube uh, that say, for example, you can, you can learn a language fast, but you have to put intensity, and a lot of people in this very, um, you know, hectic world don't have the time to learn for eight hours a day. So if you do, <clears throat> all the more power to you, as they say. But the, the 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 point is that if you have one hour, you know, of time to dedicate to language learning, it's going to take the very least nine months, twelve months to start having a conversation, and that is perfectly okay. Think about a kid, kid start speaking their own native language in what, three years after three years of just listening and then start speaking better and better after five years. And we demand that we speak a, a foreign language in a matter of weeks. That's ridiculous if you think about it. So um, let me see here. Um, Elena, Elena asks a specific question about deliberate practice in German. Uh, how did I learn German and how did I practice? I did the bidirectional translation method at the beginning, and then I read a lot of books and listened to a lot of podcasts and did some deliberate practice also with friends and tutors. So that's that's how I, in a nutshell, I can't reply with uh, you know details because we're running out of time. We still have, I think, 20 minutes to go. <clears throat> if you find this interesting, I'll go for 20 more minutes. Normally it's an hour. Um, Anna asks, what do you think about some apps like, I lost it, Lango Talk, where can you can practice your speaking with AI? I think I already replied to this question. If you feel like, if you find it cool, and um, that's great. Just practice with your AI as long as you also practice with other human beings. Um, so, uh, Luca, do you think that switching instantaneously between languages is a different skill from being able to learn many languages? How would you suggest training it? Yes, it's a skill in and of itself. There's a center and there's a specific point in the brain, which is called a language switcher. A neurologist that I met at a conference explained that to me. Uh, now, I don't know the details, but yes, you can learn to switch between languages. Normally, polyglots can do that uh, naturally, but it's something that you can uh, train. And, uh, and like anything else. So it's a skill, it's a sub-skill within the skill of speaking multiple languages. Um, so let me see. Um, 
Ciao Luca, hello Luca, ciao Rocco. Thanks Luca, I'm not eating just yet, but I'm 72 and still learning. I probably have less time, but I keep at it. Thank you, Brian. So not eating yet means that I got to your question before dinner. Um, Many asks, Luca, I be, Lu, Lu is another nice way to say Luca. Lu, hai mai pensato di imparare norvegese, visto che è molto simile allo svedese? Have you ever thought of learning Norwegian since it's very next, very close to Swedish? And how's it going with Danish? Uh, two interesting questions. No, I've never thought of learning Norwegian just because I speak Swedish and I have a lot of Norwegian friends that we communicate in, in Swedish. Uh, I speak Swedish, they speak Nor Norwegian, I understand. And as Danish, I kind of left it behind i gotta tell you the truth it's been like two years that i haven't so much as touched it because i'm dedicating to other um other languages something's got to give as they say someone wrote something chem french in uh, turkish uh i just uh, understood luca abi i'm not sure maybe it's high maybe i i have and then turche i'm gonna start learning turkish but i can't answer that question because i do not speak turkish maybe someone can translate that for me um let me see. Do you think it's better to start speaking at the beginning of the language learning process or can you learn for a while before you start speaking? I would very much uh, wait, but if you feel like you want to start from the very beginning, you can if you have the drive, if the language is very similar, but you don't have to you don't have to forget to get massive input. So it's up to you, but I very much prefer waiting and getting massive input for at the very least at very at, at least 6 or 9 months before starting to speak. So, um, what's your approach when you face languages with complex syntax like German? Excellent question, Juan Torres. Uh, and the answer is I just focus on chunks. So when it comes to languages that have complex sentences, focus on small parts of the language. Do not try to address immediately long sentences or you're going to go crazy. So learn the basics. I want to, uh, and then you use, I want to learn. I want to, I must, I have to, then you, you can use for example, an infinitive, I want to learn English. And then you start building upon that. So I know that this is a very short answer. The, the answer would require at least 30 minutes of explanations. We don't have that time, but it's a very interesting question. So, so thank you for, for, for asking that. Um, do you know anything about Tamil? I know it's, I, I don't want to I don't want to say, you know, weird stuff, but I think that Tamil is one of the Dravidian languages, southern of southern India. I don't know anything. I met Christine. Christine is one of the polyglots. She's my friend. Uh, you've probably seen a video of her. She's got millions of views where she speaks a bunch of languages. She says M-I-F-B-I or something like that. She speaks Tamil. I heard her speak Tamil, but I don't, I don't know much about Tamil. Um, Steve says, loved your book. Look, I'm struggling with motivation and focusing on one language as I want to learn them all. Thank you, Steve. I am very glad that you, uh, that you like the book. So a lot of people are telling me that they're loving the book and I love you <laughs> for loving the book. Thank you. Um, and that's why we're going to translate them into multiple languages and we're going to put them on Amazon uh, probably within the next two, th three months or earlier than that so you can get a physical copy. I'm struggling with motivation and focusing on one language as I want to learn them all. That's that's the problem that we all have. We would like to learn. We have to restrict or refrain ourselves from learning all the languages in the world because they're so beautiful. But, you know, something's got to give. So yeah, I, my, my approach is to focus on one reach kind of fluency, B2, become a language user in that language, and then start learning other languages so that I can maintain multiple languages, using them in my everyday life while learning other languages. Um, what is the last book you've read? Um, I gotta go to the other room to check. I'm, I'm, reading, um, I'm reading two books, I think. Uh, one is by Scott Adams. Uh, this is the book I'm talking about, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great book. And I read the previous one, How to Reframe Your Mind or something like that by Scott Adams. I'm reading another one, um, which is called Son of Hamas. So it's a story of, um, you know, how this this uh, this guy, I got interested because of this, uh, uh, what is happening now in Israel and Palestine. So I got interested in geopolitics and I wanted to understand more of how this whole thing works and why it's happening. So I got into that. And then I'm reading a book about, it's called Fundamentals about astronomy and cosmology. I, I normally read three books every day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and uh, one or two at night for 30 minutes a day. Reading is like the most, together with language learning, is one of the things I love the most. 
So, uh, have you tried to learn Indonesian, neither? No, I'm sorry, I haven't, not yet. Uh, but maybe if I go to Indonesia, I'm going to fall in love with Indonesia and I'm going to learn Indonesian. How do you personally choose which new language to learn? I Languages chose me in a way. This is an interesting question. I ask myself, what, what do I want to do with this language? How do I picture myself speaking this language? And at the end of the day, Turkish chose me. I didn't choose Turkish because I've been hearing about how great uh, Turkey is. I've always wanted to go to Turkey. I got to know I have a couple of Turkish friends. Uh, so I've always been interested in in in. Uh, in, Turk, in, in Turkey uh, and in Turkish, and that's uh, that's how I I wait. I, I you know I think that languages leave seeds and crumbs, and then I just pick them up, and then there comes a time when I say I have to learn this language. You know, so um, <laughs> Balkan breath. Um, hi Luca, have you had a girlfriend in each of the languages you've spoken? If so, how much has it helped you? Would you say ten x? Um, I've had uh, I've had um, I've had uh, a few girlfriends for the languages for the languages I speak the the, the best um, in in I had a couple of American girlfriends French um, you know German Dutch uh, Russian Polish that has helped and I have to say that the fact that I had a relationship in like a long long term relationship with the, with these ladies wonderful ladies has really helped. Um, um, you know, skyrocket my language skills because there's two important things to stress. The first one is it's not as easy as it looks having a partner that speaks your uh, target language. You have to get to speak that language, uh, their native language from the get-go. Otherwise, it's going to stay like in English and it's never going to change. So that's why when I started these relationships, I always started them in their language and it, it, in, and it stayed that way. And that really helped because you not only talk to your girlfriend, but you also get to know the entire environment, the entire story, the family behind uh, behind that girl, and you get to use the language and you become a language user. So that has a, has had a huge impact in my language learning skills. Um, how do you define your learning curve with respect to language acquisition? Break philosophical and technical questions. I love that. This is this takes a long time to answer, so I'm gonna skip that, but keep it for the next uh, for the next. Uh, uh, alive because it's a really interesting question. Um, what is better to read books or newspapers where the vocabulary is more up to date? Uh, as Stephen Krashen would say, everything. Read books and newspapers. The logic is always an and logic, and not an or logic. Books and newspapers. Because when you get to books, nonfiction, novels, and, uh, and newspapers, and you can rotate them, you know, you don't need to read a book, a nonfiction, novel, and a newspaper every day, but you can rotate, you can do all things. There's greatness in diversity and variety and you get to you get exposed to uh, multiple ways in which the language is used so i would i would recommend all of those which i do i love nonfiction, novels and newspapers and magazines and cartoons and as stephen crash would say anything goes as long as you read uh, can you recommend a good resource for learning Thai? I got to tell you the truth. I don't, I, I kind of remember there was Banana Thai. I think it's called Banana Thai because uh, um, a colleague of mine used to, was, was learning Thai at the time, told me that Banana Thai is a good one. I don't speak Thai and I have never learned Thai though, so I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know so much. I don't know the details. Uh, Turkish chose me. Is it because of the beautiful Turkish girls? Miko, not just because of the girls. It's because of the culture. Uh, but I met a couple of Turkish girls who are super, super nice. Um, so let me see here. Um, let me see. Um, Machiavellista says, I want to buy the OIP, but the only thing I need from the OIP are module 11 and 12. I'm wondering if I should wait for your new course. Machiavellista, I think I know your, your name said, it rings a bell. You've been a long, long time follower, if I'm not wrong. And my answer is you can, if you want to, if you, you can wait, but the OIP, the, the, in general, the overcoming the intermediate plateau, as I said, is not just about the information that you get. It's a whole package. It's the community of learners. You learn to be a better learner in general. It's not just about the mere skills you will see that all the things you say, okay, I'm good at reading, I'm good at listening. You know, you can always find new methods, new strategies that might surprise you. And on top of that, these are, apart from the fact you get live access to the course, but you can apply it to any other language. But if you want to wait for the next specific course, because we're building specific courses for speaking, listening, writing, et cetera, et cetera, 
you can you can wait. There's no problem. Ray Ray Rodriguez says, "Hi Luca, big fan. Thank you. Uh, I love big fans." Question: I know you recommend input via immersion, lots of reading, listening, and speaking. But as a complete beginner, how do you recommend picking up the initial words? Uh, how do you recommend picking up the initial words? I'm not sure what you understand by um, picking up the initial words. My answer is that you don't have to pick any word at the beginning. You have to understand the like the structure of a language. So think about that. Language learning is structured into three main phases, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. In the, inter in the beginner uh, phase, your infrastructure is small. Your linguistic infrastructure, the amount of connections you have in a brain, the amount of words you know, the amount of phrases and sentences is slow. So it's difficult to pick up words. Focus on understanding the language, understanding how the grammar, the, uh, the sound structure works, how vocabulary works too. And then you will start, you will start, your brain will start, picking up words uh, better and better. Go Bike says, hello, my dear friend. Hi. How old are you? Four, uh, in, in exactly, let me think, um, 20 days, it's 17th of December, I'm going to turn 43. Alas. Alas, pinkadas, as they say in Dutch. Um, Break the logic, another technical question. Do you think that dynamic repetition helps to absorb language structure in the starting phase? Um, yes, but I think that, as I said at the beginning, in the, at the beginning of your language learning process, you have to focus on understanding how the language works, not about dynamic or, uh, or static repetition. You can repeat if you want to, but I think it's a pointless exercise if you don't get enough exposure so that your brain can start figuring out patterns. You've probably noticed that, especially at the beginning, you think that, oh, I can pick up words. You get the impression that you're learning words, that's fine. But my suggestion is, you know, snap out of this mindset. I have to pick up words and, and focus on, I have to understand how this language works. Because when you understand the ins and outs of the dynamics and mechanics of how a language works, then uh, learning vocabulary is gonna be a byproduct of that. Hola, Andreina. Do you use the same methods to learn Asian and Romance languages? This is a very interesting and kind of technical question. The core methods are exactly the same because the principles to acquire any language is exactly are like the principles are exactly the same, but the tactics, there's a difference between strategy and tactics, change. So that basically the strategy is the principles and the tactics are the kind of methods in order to address the single moving parts of any language. And every language has small and well, small and big, you know, different parts. You know, Chinese is, has Chinese characters. You have to address that sub skill. You have to learn how to address that, which is very specific to Chinese, while other languages do not have that problem. While, for example, another language like English has the problem of being a non phonetic language. So it's really difficult when it comes to pronunciation. And then you have to learn the sub skill of learning that part of English. So the answer is yes, I slightly tweak my, let's say, the, the tactics, but the strategy, the, the overall strategy of how I learn remains the same. Well, oh, let me see here. Globus, I gotta say that your tips totally helped me my, my, help my progress in German. Thank you. Dankeschön. Uh, bitte, Globus. I'm really glad to hear that I'm of any help. Um, Federico Pugelli. Hi, Luca. You speak Greek at a very high level now. I don't know about that, but I think I can have a nice conversation. Kobedula. Have you tried to read the Gospels in their original version? I'm a huge fan of classical languages, hence the question. My answer is no, I haven't. Um, I am more like, I love, uh, you know, class classical languages and classics, uh, literature, but my focus is, my main focus is to use the language and enjoy the language and all its features, you know, it's uh, in all its beauty. So having conversations, reading books, et cetera, et cetera. But I got to tell you the truth. If one day I, I get the chance of reading the gospel in, in, in Greek, I will be overjoyed. But that's not my main focus now. Um, uh, let me see. What's your impression of U.S. Army language training? I don't know about that. I've heard about it. I watched a couple of videos. Um, I would say that intensity and frequency are uh, big winners when you have the chance of practicing or learning from scratch eight hours a day or 10 hours a day. Uh, well, then, of course, you can learn a language fast or faster than anybody else because you're putting eight hours a day or 10 hours a day. I, 
again, I, I don't want to talk about stuff I do not know, but I know that it's kind of a stressful environment where you are forced to use the language even when you don't know much about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that way. I would do it in a slightly different way. But the the print the core principle is frequency and intensity. If you get that, you know, we normal people, we get to maybe <laughs> get to get exposed to any language for 30 minutes a day, 45, an hour, even two hours. Look, looks like there's you know, we're investing a lot of time. Those people go to the training, they're forced to learn for eight hours a day. And I can guarantee you that if you learn for eight hours a day, then you're going to get there faster than, than us, the mortals who's, who learn a language for one, two hours a day. Naidorf, ciao Luca, what's your approach to learning grammar? Big question. I have a lot of, uh, I have a couple of videos or three videos on YouTube about how to learn grammar. I, I, if you have the time, just write how to learn grammar, Luca Lamparello on YouTube, and you're, you're going to see them and also have in-depth articles about how to learn grammar. Uh, but my answer is you do not learn um, language from grammar. You learn grammar from language. That's my answer. As Kato Lomb or Lomb Kato, you invert the name and the surname. In, in Hungarian, the famous Hungarian polyglot used to say, and she was damn right. So again, at the beginning, when I do this bidirectional translation method, I basically use only grammar notes in order to understand the structure of the language. I don't memorize anything because grammar, of course, you have to um, you have to speak a language well. You know, in Russian, say говорить грамотно to speak a language well. Of course, you have to know the grammar, but you have to absorb the grammar by exposing yourself to the, to the language. If your main focus becomes grammar to the detriment of actually learning a language, of actually learning the language and using the language, then things go south, as they say. Uh, go by go. How good is your Hungarian at the moment? I think it's uh, again. I I don't think in terms of le levels. I think it's good enough to have meaningful conversations with native speakers and um, to listen to podcasts. I still struggle when it comes to watching the news or I'm watching a podcast which is called Friedrichus Podcast. Really interesting stuff. Very long interviews. Um, I have double subtitles with Language Reactor. You can watch. Uh, you can watch any YouTube video with double subtitles. I watch them in Hungarian and in English. If you haven't watched the video, I made a video about uh, how to use language reactor, have double subtitles on Netflix and on YouTube. I understand 60% um, of the content, 70% thanks to the subtitles, but I still struggle to um, you know, understand the news or things materials for native speakers but i'm pretty happy with the level i have with hungarian and every time that i get to use it in beautiful budapest it's it's a joy balkan breath you're 43 by the time you're 83 if i get there do you think you'll be speaking 30 languages i again i don't i don't count but i think that if i made it like doing the math if we have to do the math 40 years from now if i learn one language every two years i will get there so uh, is Romanian the only language you've abandoned, Frank asks. Very interesting question. Actually, no, because you have Danish as well, and you have Japanese, so there's already three. Uh, I want to go back to Romanian, and I want to go back to Japanese, and I want to go back to Danish, but, you know, you only have 24 hours, so I have to decide at the moment what is the thing that is the priority. What, what, is, what is the priority for me? For now, it's learning Turkish, lear learning, continue learning Greek, Hungarian, and, and, and resume Serbian. So... Again, uh, you know, I I want to go back, but I have to constantly every year I have to think, you know, what is the most meaningful uh, thing for me given the circumstances I'm living. If, for example, I meet I don't know I make a Japanese friend and I get to to go to Japan, well then I will uh, that will rekindle my desire for learning Japanese and I'll start again. So it really depends on a number of factors. It's not an easy question to answer. Um, Ray Ray says, in the beginning, you have to learn how the language, uh, I lost, I lost the question. I, I kind of remember how the language works. What do you mean? Sentence structure, it's sentence structure, syntax, it's grammar, and it's a sound structure of the language. So it's vocabulary, syntax, uh, grammar, and, uh, overall how the, all the, all the main parts of, of the language. Um, so, um, Hi Luca, big up from Colombia. Where is the correct time to talk my little my little son in English? So when is the when when is the correct time to speak to your little to your little son in English? Well, if you want, you can talk to to him from the get go, from the beginning. 
Um, so it really depends on. I, I always recommend to, if you speak English well, then talk to your to your to your kid in English. If you don't speak it that well, I would rather send him to an English speaking school if you have the chance, or have him, you know, for example, watch cartoons in English. Kind of create the environment where he can get to listen to English and get exposed to English without you necessarily speaking it. You know, speaking to him. Uh, Koye Osorio, hola, ayer me uní a tu curso, es genial. Thank you, Koye. He said that he signed up for the course and he loves it. Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys uh, like the courses. I'm doing this for you. What really, like, one, one thing that I wanted to say is that uh, apart from the money, of course, the money helps us, you know, stay afloat and live well. But m for me, it like the idea of being able to convey my knowledge to help you learn languages and to be able to do it across the, you know, around the globe is, is the most uh, rewarding thing ever because I, I really what really drives me, compels me, uh, makes me stay up at night, so to speak, is uh, good quality education. So high quality education. And I, I hope we'll, my team and I were providing that. Qual è il posto più bello in cui hai vissuto? Renio asks, what is the, the best place, uh, the most beautiful place you've ever lived? It's a good question. Um, I love, uh, it's not, you know, it's, there's not one. I lived in Paris. I lived in, in Barcelona. Um, I spent a lot of time in Berlin. I love all of those cities. I got to tell you the truth. But my favorite place now is Krakow, Poland. I always go there for a couple of um, months in the summer where they don't have the Sharufka. Sharufka is that nice, well, nice, nice term in Polish. It says that the gray skies in winter. I don't go there in winter, but I love it in the summer. Uh, so, um, let me see. I've been living in Poland for five years. Speaking of Poland, Emanuele Radalli, or Radaelli, working for a cor corporate company, give me the opportunity to speak in different languages. Thank you for sharing, Emanuele. I'm glad to hear you're living in Poland. I don't know where you're living, but if you're living in, in, in Krakow, Krakow, lucky you. So, uh, how long have you been learning Russian? Uh, I started in 2000 and... Um, let me think, 2004, uh, yes, 2004, Branka says, nice outfit, Luca, thank you very much, Hvala uh, Puno, Branka, she's Serbian, um, then uh, I have a question in, uh, uh, in Russian, and Ruski Borchin Yuchicha, which means, are you still learning uh, Russian, and the answer is, I'm using it, I'm a language user, if, you feel, if you've been listening uh, from the very beginning, I'm a language user in Russian. So I get to use Russian, get to speak it, watch the news. So it's not a matter of learning anymore, sitting down and learning. It's more like enjoying the language, listening to the news. I'm uh, listening very often to BBC Ruski uh, and uh, or watch movies, etc. So I'm not technically learning it anymore, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still learning by using it. Let's, let's put it this way. Ale asks, la tua preparazione come ingegnere elettronico ti ha aiutato a costruire il rigore necessario per apprendere a fondo tanto i MOSFET quanto, quanto le lingue. <laughs> I MOSFET, oh boy. So this, this is uh, like, the, the, basically the, the question is, your preparation as an electronic engineer, the, the degree that you got as an electronic engineer, did, did it help you build the rigor that is necessary to learn uh, deeply both the MOSFET as well as the languages. MOSFET is, a, a, you know, it has to do with transistors and the stuff of electronics. Um, I think that the degree in electronic engineering and the scientific background has given me, uh, let's say, structure. So I always build things in steps. I always see everything as a process, as a system that you can break down in simpler parts. You can dissect in simpler parts that are easier to understand and easier to manage. So in that regard, um, you know, the scientific background that I got is really was and is still to this day very, very helpful. This is what my father used to say. He told me, maybe you will not be an engineer. You're pursuing this, uh, you know, you're, you're getting the de a degree as an electronic engineer and maybe you will work with languages and actually it, it turned out that way. But whatever you're going to learn at university is going to be helpful. And my dad was right. He was always right. He was right most of the time. <laughs> Tak for alt. What do you think of Asimo resources? I talk about extensively about Asimo, and I always say that Asimo is great. So you should start using it as a beginner. 
Alors, euh, Atlas Mondio asks in French, j'ai adoré ta vidéo avec Easy Greek. I loved your uh, video with Easy Greek. Super inspirant. Tu penses que parler espagnol d'Espagne t'aide à bien prononcer le grec. Do you think that learning, to sp you know, speaking, the fact that you speak Castilian Spanish has helped you pronounce Greek without a doubt? It's a resounding yes. Because first time I heard some Greeks speak on the street, like, you know, on the street and say, oh, these are drunk Spaniards. Spaniards. It's always confused. You know, I, I used to confuse uh, Greeks with uh, drunk uh, Spaniards uh, and, and because the languages sound very much alike. So, yes, it really helped. Speaking multiple languages, if, if you know, when you have a lot of languages under your belt, you have some features within some languages that, Are very that once you understand them deeply, they will they will help you under, understand first and then replicate um, the features of other languages. In the case of Spanish, the let's say the the sound structure is pretty much the same, so vowels and the melody is very similar, so they're really helped. Um, Machiavelliste, Luca, you should make a video with Andrea Musi. I don't know. He's one of the best memory champions. Oh, I've, I've heard about him of all, the, of all times. I'm sure this will be a fascinating conversation. Why not? Um, I'm going to do one with Alessandro De Concini. I don't know if you know uh, him. Uh, I think he's a friend with Ale uh, Andrea Musi. And I think I got a book by Andrea Musi. If I remember wrong, it's somewhere in the library, but I never got to read it. Um, let me see here. Ricardo, have you ever considered to make YouTube videos as a digital nomad? With the amount of language that you speak, it will be original and successful. Um, I have so much to say about this. But yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in Rome, but I also spent a lot of time traveling. I should I should do more. I don't know if you guys would like to see me in like in, in, in real life using languages. Uh, I, I do a lot of videos from home, not because it's, I know it can get boring, but um, I think... I, I bought a lot of stuff. Well, you, can, you cannot see all the equipment I bought for also shooting videos outside. So um, I think I want to take the take it to the next step and show more of my life here and more of my life out and about. Um, so sorry if I'm skipping questions. I see a lot of interesting questions, but we're running out of time. I'm going to run. This, this is really interesting. So I'm going to run for 10 more minutes, and then we're going to call it quits, as they say. Thank you for all the amazing questions I'm getting. Um, Do you believe in collecting consciousness? Yeah, I, I like uh, back that you you alternate between philosophical and very technical questions. Um, yes, there's a lot to say about that, but that's, this is not connecting with uh, language learning. But I could talk about hours about for hours about collective consciousness. But the the short answer is yes. Avez-vous étudié le chinois récemment? Have you been learning any Chinese recently? And the answer is no. Um, learn some Farsi, Persian, Luca. I will. It's in the in, it's in the in the list. Um, Neither. I'm wondering, Luca, who's the most impressive polygon you've ever met? Any interesting story about them? Um, yes, I can talk for hours about Richard Simcott. He was here four days ago, and you know, I, I speak 50 languages. I consider myself an accomplished polyglot, a person who speaks a bunch of languages. But Richard is in another dimension. He's in another world. And um, I don't think I've ever met anybody even close to the language skills, the social skills of uh, that, that Richard possesses. So it's just out of this world. And uh, if for all those who don't know about Richard Simcott, just write Richard Simcott on Google or on YouTube and you will see the king of languages. So um, How much time do you spend per day learning a new language? I would say between 30 and 45 minutes. When it depending on depends on the level. When I'm a beginner, I, I you always spend one hour and 50 minutes with my bidirectional translation. So the bidirectional translation after 10 lessons, because Asimil has progressively longer lessons, I get to one hour 50 minutes every single day. And um, and uh, and then when I get to a low intermediate level, I tend to spend 45 minutes a day more or less learning new languages. Then I spend hours using the other languages that, that I know, but that's language user uh, kingdom. It's a different, it's a different um, matter. Uh, let me see. What does not everyone uh, write in English? Do we want to understand each other? Lucas speaks in English. Uh, well, you can you can ask in any in any language. It's better if you ask it in English just to keep it consistent. But if you ask in other languages, and I read the the message, I will reply in English, and I'll translate for you guys. Um, let me see a couple of more questions I'm going to answer. There's so many. I can make a video for each question that you ask. It's just amazing. Um, so 
If language like is determine your strength, would you lose in a cage fight to Richard? Without a doubt, I would lose. Uh, you know, that's what I have to. I don't like comparing. I think everybody's got a different story. But Richard is another. Is it's, an, it's another level. I, I cannot even compare myself with Richard. Richard is the man, the king of languages. Maybe I'm a prince, <laughs> but not a king. Uh, do you also listen to the famous Easy German podcast? They made a video with them, and it was really cool uh, with Karina and Janos. But uh, no, I don't listen to Easy German right now. I gotta tell you the truth. I prefer watching podcasts like uh, geopolitics and other things. But I'm not. I'm not watching Easy German, although I highly recommend it. Uh, super easy German for beginners and easy German for intermediate learners. Um, does Richard, uh, can Richard, uh, can Richard reach the level C1 in three months? Um, I I think, I think Frank, uh, the, the question is not that they're relevant at the end of the day, but he learns languages fast. I think he got to a very nice level in German when he was in Germany, but I don't think anybody can reach a C1 level maybe in very, very specific circumstances, a C1, no, because reaching C1 means to add experience. It's not just the skill set, it's experience and you need time for that and emotions. So when is the advanced C1 or C2 course coming out? We are working on that, but we have the speaking course, the two language course, and a very cool, I don't know if anybody is learning Italian, we have something really cool that has never been done before. And I'm really proud of this Italian course we're getting out. And then we're going to we're going to do the, the advanced course, which a lot of people in the academy are asking me because they completed the first one, the second, and now they want the third installment. And we already have the, the entire outline outline of the course, but it's going to take some time because it's going to be a huge course because from B2 to C1, that's a different matter. And I'm going to put all my experience in it. And I can't wait to get that there. What is a typical day like for you, Natalia? Interesting question. I will make a video about that. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to address that, but I will show you uh what i do from from dusk till dawn as they say uh, so you can get to see what i do when it comes to learning languages and when it comes to using languages we're two different two different things so um um let me see ricardo ask i'm gonna ask uh, i'm gonna answer three more questions uh, hi, Luca. Is it possible to, to conciliate a routine like yours with raising children and being married i don't think so um, I, I chose this life. This doesn't mean I'm not going to get married and have children, but as of now, I think that the two things don't go to get, you can always squeeze in time, but the way I, I live is kind of special because I married languages, so to speak. So it's not easy, but you can always squeeze time to learn languages. You can learn one. You don't have to learn 10,000. If you're married and have children, you can always squeeze in 15, 30 minutes of time. If you want to, it's not a matter of having time. It's a matter of Finding time. A cafe in Krakow or a beach in Greece? Both, I would say, Balkan. Um, okay, two more questions. And let me see. Uh, how do you learn similar languages like Portuguese and Spanish and not mixing up vocabulary? This is in the, one of the answers, the, the main pillars of, of the learning two languages at once course we're building. I would say do not look. Do not learn two languages at once that are so similar from the beginning. But if you get one to a B2 level, then learning the other becomes way easier and you don't confuse them. If you're trying to learn both languages at the same time and they're very similar, oh boy, good luck with that. So I would not recommend it. And it's normal that you confuse them because, um, you know, in your brain, the brain uses certain circuitry, so to speak, that is the same for similar languages. And... That's why if you're learning two languages at the same time and they're both like from scratch, then, you know, there's some sort of interference that is inevitable. Uh, Marcia says, I'm also very interested in the C1, C2 course, hopefully in 2024, late 2024, because we already have the, the outline, but building a course and this the, uh, this quality is, is going to take a long time, but it's going to be worth it, worth the wait. Again, if you can. Sign up to the newsletter. We're going to inform you about all the courses that are uh, coming out. And there's one that is coming out very soon. So uh, I'm going to ask the last question. What is your favorite language that you've learned? As I said before, uh, I love all of them, but I definitely fall in love with Greek, the way it sounds, the way it is. Uh, it's native speakers, and I can't wait to uh, do this very long podcast about language learning on the 7th of December with Mr. Dimitri from Easy Greek, and then publish another video on my channel that we uh, recorded in Greece, um, and then uh, meet them here. They're coming, Marilena and Dimitri, in, uh, they're coming to Rome. 
and then I'm gonna make a video probably also on Instagram maybe starting to make some videos in Greek because I can't wait you know to use the language not only in real life with uh, with my uh, flatmate but also to show you like the videos of, of speaking Greek okay so uh, to wrap it up it's been a, a long marathon I just wanted to remind you that we have a Black Friday campaign uh, all the courses are at 50% off and I'm gonna I'm gonna send you two links again for those who are interested in the in the in the courses. Uh, as of now, you also get uh, the book if you look on the on the website. Um, the ebook is 15 euro, uh, sorry, 19 euro, and it's not just a book. So first, the first link is the four courses. The second link is the ebook, uh, but the ebook is also an audio book, and it's an entire course. We're presenting it as a course. People are leaving comments. You, it's an interactive thing. So not just a simple book. It's a, the entire experience. Uh, and I will reply to questions. And there's a lot of people, hundreds of people about the, the book and left uh, wonderful uh, comments. And I'm so glad that I was able to put this book together. Um, thank you, Balkan. I was crying myself, I got to uh, confess, when I was recording the last part because it was very emotional for me for what I said in the last chapter. Um, and... Um, Last but not least, as I said, uh, if you're not interested in the courses, you can't afford them or uh, anything or anything in between for whatever reason, um, just um, let me just write it here. You can um, uh, you can uh, simply check the website and you can subscribe to uh, you can simply subscribe to the newsletter and you will receive a lot of stuff for free. The first thing you're going to receive is a brand new. Um, lead, we call it lead magnet, which is basically another ebook. It's going to be ready in, I think, three weeks. So it's it's already it's it's a book. It's like the ebook that I'm uh, we're currently selling, but it's another. I think it's eighty or ninety pages, and it's audiobook. So read by me in the recording studio, and there's a lot of free content, free advice that you can enjoy. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Um, it's been uh, it's been great. I think I should do this more often if you are interested and if you found this uh, useful. I hope you found this useful. I always get energized and happy uh, replying to your messages and getting so many cool uh, questions and uh, to, to feel your enthusiasm. This is really refreshing, energizing, motivating. So we'll do this again. And uh, thank you very much. Again, one last thing I wanted to address. If I haven't answered any of your, some of your questions, so if someone asks a question, I did not ignore it. It was just that it's really difficult for me to speak, to think about an answer, and at the same time address every single uh, question of yours. Keep it there. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if, if I did not answer your question for any reason, you can always ask the next time, or you can send me a message through the website. Uh, or you can write a comment on YouTube, you can find a way to write to me and I will get back to you. Thank you very much to anyone, to everyone. Uh, you guys are amazing. Keep learning languages because it will change your life and it's already changing your life. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic weekend. Um, remember the Black Friday. This is a great chance um, to get into a new world. And remember that you always have a 14-day money-back guarantee, which means if you don't like the course, Within 14 days, you can ask for a refund and it will be delivered to you. But most people actually stay with us and they love it. Bye. And uh, as always, happy language learning. Bye-bye.